Welcome to Fiber Hustle. My name is Chip. My name is Aaron. I uh, am still clean shaven and maybe a little grayer. I like to knit and crochet. And is that a dig on gray and white and a little bit of salt and pepper? I mean, the beard has been consistent. Uh, it's gone through, through different variations, but... Uh, it's, it's Whatever this is, I think, is for life. <laughs> whatever is happening right here. Well, welcome back, gang. And you like to watch. You do. It's episode 43. <laughs> Hello, how are you? How are you doing? How about that intro? Maybe we should update it because that's a... That, I mean, I feel like it's a blast from the past. So before we start doing this, we have to watch our intro, then hit a button, then we start this. And we were just sitting there, I go, I think we need to update our intro <laughs> because we look all fresh-faced and dark-haired. And I mean, this is what you get now, which is, I still think, amazingly beautiful. I mean, but which, we just have updated I have two for drinks here, so I mean, like, Me I'm too. ready. <laughs> it is springtime. This one I have Are hot you? cocoa, and this one I have, like, a fruit punch because that is what springtime is. It's like cold one hour hailing, then the next hour, like, oh, the sun's out in 60. Mm. This combination, disgusting in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so hot cocoa and fruit punch, I do not recommend. I have a little bit of Pepsi in this one, just a little bit. Uh, the remnants, because like a Pepsi will last me a couple of days. And so I have a little bit of Pepsi that I left over, and then I have some in my Fiber Hustle cup. I have some uh, water, oh, all delicious. of this water. I'm going to drink it. To this this episode? Uh, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Do you remember those days when podcasts used to be like, oh, today I'm drinking this tea and this? I feel like that's what we just did. But you know what? It's a throwback to those days of when <laughs> we're drinking. Welcome back, gang. <laughs> it's good to see you. It really is. What's been going on? All right. So. Look, gang, I finally got to do what a quilter needs to do. I did what needed to be done, and I finally left the house, and I went to QuiltCon. He left the house by himself, got in an airplane, and left me here, which I'm very proud of. You got out there in the world. It was like Ernest goes to camp or something. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay, we all know, get it out of your system. You're talking to the TV, you're talking to your phone, you're talking house. to your devices. Yes, Chip left the house. Wow. And I will tell you, I came home to Aaron and I said, I don't like traveling without you. He did, he really said that. I, I mean, like I was, I was really, really unnerved for a whole week, but I went to QuiltCon and thank God I had a, a posse to go with. That is very nice. Probably didn't like traveling because I usually say, hey, we're catching this cab, we're doing this flight, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I have to do this all myself? <laughs> <laughs> I should have set like security to take you to the plane, board you, buckle you, all that good stuff. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I had, I had to fend for myself somewhat and be a grown up, and I made it through. Nice. Tell us all about QuiltCon. I'm excited to hear about it. Speaking of making it through, so a lot of the people that I... Uh, uh, got to know, and even uh, half of our, I'm saying the better half of our house did not get COVID, uh, but the other half did get COVID, and I am shocked. So for those of you who are not in the know, uh, for you knitters who only do your knitting or you only do your crocheting, QuiltCon is a huge, huge deal. Every year um, it bounces from one coast to the other, this year it was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and 10,000 people pre-registered, bought tickets to go to QuiltCon. It was the largest QuiltCon to date, and... Is QuiltCon knitter and crocheters Rhinebeck? Bigger. Huger. Huge. Huge. <laughs> wow, so, sounds huge. And it's something that's been on my bucket list forever and ever and ever. And I'm going to try to give you the fast highlights, if that's okay. I'm here for it. So fast highlights. Um, my I have a sew gang, and that includes Brendan and Angel and Mrs. Kravitz. Love her too. We all went to rally and met up, and got a house. We got an Airbnb, and it was not the best house. <laughs> it was not the best house, but. I mean, like it was. We made we made the best of it. It was a lot of fun. So uh, QuiltCon lasts for about three days, and 
it is, it's a mix of, you have the show where you're put, having all of these quilts that have to be juried in. You get to see all the quilts on display. You get to go to uh, vendors. And so of course, Bernina was there and I had to talk to them. Um, and no, I'm not getting a, 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 a Oh, I know you're not. Computer for it. You're, the, my I, machine. That's a fact. I asked him. I said, you know, if one falls off the truck, you, you can bring it over. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, but then they also have lectures and they have uh, classes. I mean, there's so much to do. Now that I've been, I can say with confidence, I would totally do it again. Oh, nice. And I would do one thing, um, maybe one or two things different. So I put in 25 hours of volunteering time and that meant I was at the registration desk and literally you're seeing thousands of people and getting, you know, uh, helping them purchase their tickets and moving them on. We were just like, you know, it was like being at church again because like when I was a kid, I didn't want to just sit in a pew. I want to be part of the action. So I was an altar boy and it was a lot of fun because you get to meet people, you get to talk to people. And so I would do volunteering 100% again. And um, I wish, I, I mean, like I could talk hours about this, but uh, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to show you a couple of fun, uh, a cu couple of fun pictures. And I haven't seen any of these yet, so. Okay, so let's go to, is my button working? There we go. There is, to your left, we have Angel of the Scrappy Angel. <sighs> We have Mr. Brendan Berg. He, this man is a big deal. I mean, he, if there are people, he knows them. We have Mrs. Kravitz. And then of course, lo and behold, there's moi. Look at you. What's the sign say? Rally. So this was outside the convention hall at uh, uh, the, the convention center. Okay. And then, okay. So then moving on, we have uh, the four of us again. We have Brendan Angel. Sorry, I can't get over Brendan's shoes. What are what's happening on the? Is that quilted shoes? Like those are or? his. I think they're Vans, and I think they were uh, Pride ones. Oh, okay, those were fun. I like those. <laughs> they were a lot of fun. So we, I mean, this was the 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 crew that everybody wanted to emulate. Nobody could duplicate. <laughs> all the girls wanted to be you. All the boys wanted to. We're the rowdy bunch. <laughs> oh, now, why do I show you this chair? You might ask. Why, why, Chip? Why would you show us a chair? Well, the Rowdy Bunch was sitting at a table, this big, huge table. And I came up and there was Brendan, there was Angel, there was Mrs. Kravitz, and I went to sit by Mrs. Kravitz. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. I've got my feet up, my, t my feet are tired. And I'm like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> so I went and sat next to Brendan. It's all in the vault. So we're sitting there and all of a sudden this other woman is sitting there and I'm like, who, who's this? Who, who is this? <laughs> open seating, obviously. It was just open seating. This woman came and sat at their table just to eat her lunch. She didn't. And so we started talking about long arming. Angel was trying to get Mrs. Kravitz to buy a long arm <laughs> and, so, and she was drawing. So I did, I did a playbook out of uh, Aaron's uh, playbook. So when I was first looking at long arms and we would go to the shows, Aaron would go to the long arms and he would draw penises. <laughs> <laughs> because I am 14 years old inside. So, you know, quilting is just drawing. <laughs> so if you ever see a penis when you're out at a quilt store, I was probably there. Um, so we're talking about that and um, you know, Angel is, is rehashing that she's trying to get uh, Mrs. Kravitz to buy uh, a long arm. And I said, oh, did you get, did you draw some penises? <laughs> the room is just, we're in this convention center, it's just echoing. <laughs> this woman started eating her food a lot faster. <laughs> she was just trying. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, let's get back to this. So you, the chair, don't forget the chair. It's very important here. So... Uh, this woman from another table, there was another group, of, uh, another table over there, and she comes over and she goes, hi, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, is there a chair that we can borrow? Mrs. Kravitz had her feet up on an empty chair and she's like, no, nope, I'm sorry, we don't have any extra God. chairs. All of a sudden the woman looks so deflated and so she walks back to the, her table and she's, I mean, just defeated. And so Brendan's like, Susan, 
your majesty, there's a chair. So he's like, oh my God, I didn't even realize <laughs> she had been in that position with her feet propped up for so long that, uh, yeah, she's a little stingy. So we made sure when we got up from the, the table, uh, I, I screamed over, hey, did you want to get a picture from the stingy lady over here? <laughs> Uh, if, Susan, you're the best. <laughs> Herna chairs. Herna chair. Okay. So, uh, looking back, I got to meet Scott Coley. Scott Coley. You know Scott Coley. I do. He seems like a very nice gentleman. He, he did the, Re the RuPaul quilt a few years ago. That I, was to die for. Okay. So, this was one of my biggest, biggest, biggest um, uh, treats to get to meet Scott in person. He did this year. He was again wow. in the show. That's his father. That's a that's a um, a, a pieced quilt that he did, and that he won a prize for he um, should. Look best at that thing. best piecing. It is incredible. This is all paper piecing, but that is a photo of his father. That it is, is in, flipping, that's amazing. flipping gorgeous. And you know, I just want to be Scott when I grow up. It was so much fun walking around, and we, you know, we got to look at the, some of the show together, and we're walking through the hall. I think Scott's younger than you, but you he, want to be him when you grow up? Yes, of course. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, so Scott, it, if you're watching, it was great meeting you, and... So it, he had to send that all the way over from Germany to the, the States. Yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, interestingly enough, they say, if you ever hear one of the quilts chirping... They said, don't worry, <laughs> it's normal. Because people put air tags in their quilts because Makes if they sense. ever have to travel, they know exactly where their quilts are at all times. Interesting. So his quilts have traveled. Good, That's uh, the air tags is a very good idea. I don't know if he had an air tag in there, but you know, it would be very, it would be very interesting. All right, so I met uh, Scott Coley, one of my, uh, uh, just my, one this of my quilting amazing. heroes. And then I got to met Meet Bex from Bex uh, Sew College. TikTok people? Yes. Okay. She's from, I know that She's name, the yeah. Quilt Cottage. And love, 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 very sweet woman. She's one of my TikToker quilter friends. Got to meet Bex. And I got to meet Lee and the Bear Quilter. Both wonderful people. I just, I, I'm so happy I got to meet them in person. I like his jacket. The Bear um, Quilter's jacket. He is a ball of fun, I will tell you. So there's me, Brendan, and the Bear Quilter, uh, new BFFs. Uh, as I do, do again, different picture. There we go. There. So now we have um, So Becca, and then we have uh, Bear, and they were happened to be wearing the same shirt. It was hilarious. Is Stitch Bitch a brand? Is it a podcast? Is it a TikTok? What is Stitch Bitch? Mm. Or is it just something that's fun that's out there? I don't know, Aaron. Way to, way to ask me questions I can't answer. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I mean, if it was like as big as Fiber Hustle or, you know. No. Uh, so then there's me and Bex again, and then we sent a little video to our friend um, Courtney over at Peace, Love, and um, Quilts. Oh, so nice. I yep. Courtney. And then, okay. Oh, that's a man, Maury. Now, gang, I do not, I do not like my picture taken. I just, I am so awkward I don't like getting my picture taken, but you know, you gotta, you gotta suck it up. Give back to God what he gave to you. And <laughs> during, my, during my weekend, again, I put 25 hours uh, of volunteering in and I got to do some white gloving, which means that I needed to make sure that people don't touch the quilts. And then if somebody came up to me, they could say, hey, could I see the back of that quilt? Mm -hmm. So I actually got to handle. Look at you at work. Yes, and I will tell you that, like, just lifting the quilt and touching the quilts, I felt so naughty. I'm thinking of Carrie over at the Creative Obsession micromanaging me, like, don't touch the quilts, don't touch the quilts. Well, I got to touch the quilts, and I had the gloves that uh, put me in charge. <laughs> I, I was Michael Jackson moment, and it was it was actually a really really cool experience because some of these quilts are so, are so quilted within an inch of the, uh, their life, but having the ability to actually touch the quilt and you could see how much um, drape there still was, and okay. it wasn't like stiff as a board, 
I mean, it was it was really, really a privilege to be able to do that. That's awesome. That's so cool you volunteer. Um, totally, I would volunteer. I would do exactly what I uh, did that whole weekend. Okay, then we go back to the house. This is the house with, uh, you know, the rowdy group. Is that bingo? I can't see what you guys are playing. Uh, we were playing a game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, of course, the wine was flowing, <laughs> and Brendan, he found us some uh, quilt wine. Oh. Oh, it's, I'm telling you, Brendan, it's delicious. Is it really? <laughs> it was very, very good. And uh, I would totally, totally have it again. So we would play games, <sighs> and then took time for pictures. Angel is serving looks. You go, girl. <laughs> Uh, then at the end of the trip, I got to, after leaving Raleigh, I got to go back to, um, Angels and stayed for another additional day. Her quilting studio is huge. Uh, it's like, this is a studio, not a store. Exactly. When we were, uh, when we were, um, on a call and on FaceTime, I'm kind of showing him around and he's like, is that, it looks like a freaking store. And I'm like, nope, this is her sewing studio. Good for her. The Scrappy Angel has been so busy. She had, she got booted out of her, uh, her office that was upstairs where she was using as her, stu uh, her studio. Mm -hmm. Everything, she had, to, she had to expand and good for her. Yeah. I want to expand. Her. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, one of us has. <laughs> so, uh, what I would do for different and wrapping it up. So what I would do different is I paid for classes, I paid for lectures, and I definitely wouldn't do that again. Uh, I would look much prefer to do in-person classes that are local, and then I would do lectures maybe online. There's so many resources out there that it wouldn't pay for for I wouldn't pay to to do that uh, at QuiltCon. I would do the volunteering, and why I'm saying that so heartfully is that uh you get to you get an excuse to meet people and you get an excuse to just interact and it's actually there's other people that are you know they're they're in a place that they want to know other, other people and so mm -hmm. you you kind of get attract those those personalities and if i was going as a regular attendee i would be less apt to like go out and try to meet people. I, I would probably be a lot more reserved, but just being a volunteer, you know, you put your, your little service hat on and it's like, hey, hi, how are you? And you met thousands of people. Luckily, I did not get COVID. I don't know how that was possible. Uh, Brendan and I, we volunteered, we didn't get COVID. The ladies with their feet up, <laughs> they both got Don't COVID. put your feet they, up. They both got COVID. So, you know, the better half. <laughs> so, and Brendan made us these uh, lanyards. Oh, wow. And so, you know, I have my first uh, QuiltCon lanyard. Uh, let me put it correctly. And did you get a gold star? I got a gold star for volunteering. That's super cute. Because I was a super volunteer. They oh. said I was a super volunteer. And uh, actually they were, <laughs> I have to show this. So if on these lanyards, uh, if you can see, it says uh, guaranteed delightful. And then I wrote extra. <laughs> so these were, these were little, uh, little things that they were given away at one of the booths. And I think it was Ruby Star. Um, Ruby Star is one of the ones that uh, sponsored big time, sponsored QuiltCon. And like, I got a swag bag. So, oh, and cool. it says you are a gem. So even though, even though if you look at the, if you look at my, my lanyard here, it says I'm an attendee. And then on the attendee, it says, oh, there's a little star. That little star meant that, oh, you purchased your shirt. You got a little couple of extras that you prepaid for. So, and as soon as they, you picked it up, they checked you off on both Susan's and on, um, Susan's and Angels, they had an additional one. Why? Because they got, they out, out of the thousands of people, they got one of these. Only at the end of volunteering, they said, oh, by the way, we'd love you to have one of these too. So if you're interested in knowing what's in the swag, head over to the Scrappy Angel here on YouTube. And uh, we did a little podcast. And 
It was a lot of fun. And we went through everything. So Everything? Everything. I watched it, so I, I saw what's in the bag. Yes. And, and, and uh, Aaron. Yeah. Should I now tell you what I spent? Zero. Okay, I, I bought like, zero. This caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, here it comes. I went to QuiltCon and bought absolutely nothing. It was the friendship that really was, that I took, took home with me. <laughs> <laughs> the creeps. Just kidding. Okay. That's awesome. So, I mean, like, seriously, gang, I could talk hours and hours and hours about QuiltCon, but yeah, hopefully uh, we, I want to do it again in 2025 when it's going to be in Phoenix. So they travel. So that every, every year they do one coast or the other. Oh, okay. So Phoenix is what, two and a half hours from here, so that's much easier than going to Raleigh. Yeah, a hundred percent. And aren't you going to maybe you and your your gang going to enter next year, like enter quilts in next year? Are you thinking about it? Hang on to your hats. I would love to. I would love to submit a quilt to be juried in. I would do that. But I've got a long road of, ahead of me this spring, so we'll see what's going on. That's so awesome. I'm excited for you. I'm so glad that you had a great trip. I'm glad you were with your friends, the ones that. Usually are well behaved. Usually, no, they're so. not. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? I mean, for for those of you who you know, it's like this is a big vacation. You know, it's not whether you're splitting the cost of the Airbnb, the the plane tickets, the food. You know, if you're doing classes and all that stuff. Yeah, it's an expensive trip, and it's kind of like when you when you go to Rhinebeck <clears throat> or you go to Knit City. You know, it's like you have to you have to. Pick your, pick your lane, what you're going to get to do. And so for me, after all these years, it was so exciting. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I got to go. Good. I am happy you got to go as well. It does. When oh, you go why? Because state, you were so. alone for a whole week? Yeah, but I had a cold the whole week. So not like Seamus and I got the... We didn't, Seamus and I didn't get the party as much as we wanted to. <laughs> as soon as, as, soon as the, the days were counting down to me taking off... That calendar started blowing up. I mean, like he started having events that he was. I do. had like plans every single day, every single night, and then I got this cold, and I was like, "Hey, I'm sorry, I have to cancel," and I canceled everything. So me and the cat just got to hang out for a whole week, watch TV, and I actually got to knit some, which was nice. Boo hoo! <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, again. I'm 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 like terribly remiss. I'm like leaving out so much. But um, but if you go to Scrappy Angel, you have a lot more. Her oh podcast. gosh, yeah. You and the, talk about it. the fun thing is, is that after all the re, uh, the QuiltCon recap, Angel and I were playing on her long arm, and it was really fun to to you know test out a different ride. And boy, oh boy, was it a different ride. What does Do she it, have? She has a Navarna. Uh, I don't know what she has. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> she go to the Scrappy Angel and you can check out. Uh, I actually got to quilt on her quilt. Fun. Did you I, do penises? I did not do penises, oh, and uh, I I was teasing her that I was going to put stickers on her machine, and I was didn't do it. I was a good boy, and. That I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna quilt on that quilt, and she's like, no, you're not, no, you're not. When I get to her house, and she's like, hey, go ahead and let's let's you, you can quilt on this one and participate because she had already started, and I'm like, oh no 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 no, I was just kidding. Well, I did, <laughs> and I did pretty good. You chip too good. Me me quilt purdy. That's awesome. Good for you. So that is quilt con, uh, Aaron. You oh, we, we, we got to, yeah, this episode's going to be jam-packed of uh, what are you making? You made that, had to have it, shop updates and restocks. I mean, the shop updates and restocks, gang, are going to be pretty epic. I was just thinking epic. <laughs> I, I thought you had, like, an uh, ice cream headache. No. <laughs> I you were like... Yeah. All right, so, uh, Aaron, you're going to help, you're going to take the helm on this one. Okay, Chip. Yes. Um, I don't have any you made that's. You, well, you don't? No, wait, I don't have any what are you makings. Yes, what do you? <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. We're trying to get back into it. Aaron, you, know? you made that? I did. So let me show you. Uh, I've been a Shaw making fool lately. So this is the Autumn Wood Shaw 
by Winter White Knits. This is. This is. It hasn't been blocked because I just finished it recently. It's a three skein DK Shaw. Oh my God. And, let me move this here. There we go. And move this here. <laughs> I can't have anything in the way to see this Shaw. And I think it is 100% gorgeous once that I block it. Obviously this will come on down. This is a triangle Shaw, obviously. Uh, made on 4.5 millimeter needles. It is a paid for pattern. Let me just bring this down real quick. And as you see, you are alternating different colors here. This is all my, oh, it's a little bit dark for some reason, but it's fine. This is all my yarn. And we go into, this is my BFL, super, no, sorry, Superwash BFL DK base. So I have deep purple at the top. I have um, on the rocks here and then fairy tale. I love the way that fairy tale and on the rocks are playing together. It just looks exquisite. And so, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I can say about this. Uh, my BFL base is soft, maybe not as soft as you would find with Merino, but I like the stiff de definition better with the BFL base because I think it shows off more and kind of has a crisper vibe to it than a Merino base. And that's why I decided to carry it. Question. Yes. Question. Chip, there press, we go. Conference. <laughs> press conference. Press, press conference, press conference. It's been a while. Okay, so um, I heard a little birdie told me tweet, tweet. Uh, that uh, there's a lot of yarn dyers that don't get all of the, um, the acid and the excess dyes out, and that sometimes when you're finished um, knitting something up or even when you first get your skein, it doesn't feel as soft as... as you would think it would. Mm -hmm. Is it because um, it still needs another washing? Yeah, it does. It's better to do a soak, a little bit of soap with like soak or even a little bit of a hint of Dawn just to kind of condition it, loosen it up a bit. But once you block it, it will get a, it'll get a little bit softer. Some of them get way softer. This one does get a little bit softer and I like it. I like the way it is. One thing about this is you need one skein of like this one fairy tale and then the on the rocks one skein but your main color which you start at the very top like deep purple and the very bottom you need two skeins now when i say two skeins it is let me see if it says so 980 yards total and two skeins of color one the second skein that you're using of your main color at the top and the bottom you do not use that much of your second skein so just keep that in mind. You can always use it for like some color work project later or some kind of just smaller hat or something like that for like a teenager or a small adult or a baby. But yeah, so you just don't use much of your second skein. Just keep that in mind. It is a three skein project, but the main color you will need two skeins of. Is this for me? You can try it on if you would like to. <laughs> I li I'm really curious to know how big it's going to get once it's blocked out. I love it. And again, I love that you're wearing it backwards. Oh, and what the only way mean? you can tell that is because see how these stitches right here compared to this, it's like a stripe. And this is the, you can tell this is the back. So why don't they have tags? They, it's, uh, it's, my, it's my shop. We don't, have, we don't have any tags yet, but if we make tags, we can do it. There we go. You can wear it that way. I would probably put it around my neck and do a little twist and tie. You are a quilter and it shows because <laughs> you're not really selling it. But yeah, again, this was the Autumn One Shaw by Winter White Knits. It is a paid for pattern. It was a joy to work with, uh, really kind of mindless since it's in garter stitch. I use my chow goo needles for this. The, uh, ch yeah, chow goo needles again, 4.5 millimeter. And no, I think it looks really cool. So um, yeah. Give it a try. And this will also be, uh, if we ever do get out there in the world for like trunk shows or things like that, it'll be kind of like a sample knit to go off my yarn. I've been sample knitting. So that's what I've been doing because we're going to get out there soon. And uh, you may see us someday selling our yarn and our baskets and our sacks and all that good stuff. Love it. Yeah. Aaron, you made that? I did. So I wanted to do another one since... 
Chip has more of a reveal than, and you made that. So let me show you these. I went back to Ohio last October. I think that's the last time that we podcasted. And I needed something just to take some you did? airplane. I, I did. Do you not remember me no. leaving the house? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So last October, I went back to Ohio. So I needed some airplane knitting. It was a quick in and out trip. And I needed some just like hanging out with my cousins knitting. My cousins have never seen anybody knit. And they thought it was some kind of witchcraft. These are the Friends Mitts by Danny, D-A-N-I, Sunshine. And then let's the outside. This is a free pattern. It is DK weight yarn, and the yarn is scrumptious. It is Trilogy Yarns DK base, and the colorway Herd of Turtles. Nancy at the Trilogy yes. Yarn, you put made a, these? Put, no, she didn't. No, she did not make these. No, the yarn. She dyed the yarn. <laughs> <laughs> she did, but no, these are gorgeous. Now, one thing that I did do is I added an extra inch here, more than what the pattern called for. Why? Because I thought that's what I did last time when I made these. What I will not do again is add an extra inch because I put them on. And, and it just like, made you angry. It made me angry. <laughs> and that was my fault, not the pattern's fault. I love the pattern. Just because Why? when I put the, well, I'm getting there. You keep on asking. You're like Why? a four-year-old. Why? Don't tell me what time it is just, or how to make the watch. Just tell me what time well, it is. That's, <laughs> that's what the show is. Dang it. Um, when you put your jacket on, the gloves are going to scrunch up against the jacket oh. because they're too long. So then when you put the, your jacket on, it's going to like kind of scrunch up like this. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants a scrunch It's like up. the 80s. And like when they did the socks like that and like they had those huge socks and you scrunched them down and they were thick here. Oh, like the tube socks? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, exactly. What do you want She's a maniac, maniac, I know. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, don't do the. Uh, so, unless don't. Unless you want to go extra. 80s, you know, you might as well get yourself a Trans Am. And yeah, <laughs> an extra inch, it's overrated. Don't even worry about it. So, don't do that. I did this on Magic Loop 3.75 millimeter needles. And Nancy's yarn, her uh, DK base, I smelled it just because. I want to see if they still smell good. Uh, is really nice to work with. So yeah, Herd of Turtles by Trilogy Yarns. Nancy, thank you for making amazing yarn. See how it's even you know, like my shirt. It's kind of so you got this, that. Well, on long sleeves, I always wear my sleeves up. I mean, my coat is not going to be that way. But so you rather like the baseball jersey thing that comes to here, like that seventies. I just well, always half, my, half sleeve. I don't care it if it's a dress shirt or not. I mean, the sleeves come up. I'm here to work. I'm here. <laughs> work. Yes, but these are a great pattern. Just don't add the, ex add the extra inch, and everybody's going to be happy. And what was the colorway? Herd of turtles. Herd of turtles. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. No, I love these mitts. I love Nancy's yarn and her. I love Nancy. So that it all works out. Aaron, Chip, I can do more stuff, but I. Thing. No, Aaron. <laughs> Chip. Do you need a break? Do you want, have some water? Why? What's happening? Nothing. You just, you're working. Poor thing. Am I, I'm really excited. I, when I get excited, I go super fast. There's no <laughs> slowing me down. <laughs> that sounded really creepy, and it really wasn't supposed to. <sighs> Let's just all take a breath. Are you with us, gang? <laughs> Still, I'm still hanging there. <laughs> it gets better. It's <laughs> gonna get better. Chip, yes. Are you ready to show your socks? <laughs> well, if you put it that way, are you ready to reveal, reveal my socks? We had the chip basket, and now we're ready for the chip sack. The chip basket is so 2022. Three. Three. <laughs> Well, ladies, and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm showing it. It's time for I the should show it? You should show it. <laughs> it's time for the new chip sack. Okay. So there, I mean, like we could take you on a whirlwind tour. It's very quick. Uh, or we're gonna have to make it quick because there's so many. All right, so uh, what for can no... I do? I'm ready to hold the sack. Oh. I don't know if you want to give them to me or I mean do you like do you like knitting big projects? I do. I bet you do. <laughs> so I have uh, all of last year. I was so focused on 
nothing but chip baskets, but I'm like, okay, I'm ready to sew something different. And to change it up, I worked, I kid you not, about four or five months in this evolution, trying to develop the new item. And that's gonna be the chip sack. I love it. Now this is... A, All right, to... so we have three sizes. I have two that I can show because I'm, I'm still making the, the mediums, but they're, they come in a 10 inch cube. That's what this guy is. And they come in a eight inch. That's TBD. It's still being worked on. And then we have, well, I'll show you the, the companion to that. This is a six inch. Aww. So it goes six inch, eight inch, ten inch, and what I'm, what you are gonna love, is these are perfect for Aaron. Do we agree that these are gonna be like the six inch is gonna be one or two skeins? You can shove two in there after it gets used to it. You, it fits good. Insert your favorite office joke there. Your favorite Michael Scott line wasn't going for that, but. <laughs> It is one skein. It'll loosen but up. It will loosen up. You can <laughs> you can put two skeins in there. It'll just be a little tight at first. Okay, so what we what we've got here is a lovely project, and I'm calling it a sack. This is the chip sack, and it comes with a drawstring so that you can open it up. And let's show the people. So I have a caked up skein here. Oh, perfect. This is the six inch, and I can put it down in there. And this is another one. I've used this one. Oh, this is the deep purple that I used in the last shot. I said you'll have a lot left over. So if you put it in there, you can fit two. Okay, you got two, two, um, skeins. And then, two skeins. And then you still got a little pocket in here. You can put your notions, maybe put your folded pattern. And you can drawstring it up. And then you, it's got these tabs. There's four tabs. And then you can just have your yarn come out. There's a little handle, so if you just want to grab it. You know what I just saw, Charles? What? Chip, sorry. Uh, if you wanted to, you can probably take some of your yarn through here and some of your yarn through here. If you wanted to keep them separate, cinch that up. That way you have yarn coming out of here and yarn coming out of here so they're not all tangled. Oh. I mean, I don't know if that's how you designed it, but... No. I'm just saying that you could do that. Well, and that's that's kind of the thing, is that you guys are gonna teach me a lot. I mean, this is the first uh, this is the first round of these. So I'm totally open to some feedback once you guys get them. But I love, love, love this. It has a little six by six by six cube. And then uh, I said mentioned the pocket, and then on all of the sacks, it's going to have the drawstring stopper and gang. We've got our Fiber Hustle logo Yay. on those. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I couldn't be more thrilled in how these uh, turned out. And what I love is that uh, another birdie, a little friend of mine, said, hey, gang, those could actually be used as stitch stoppers, which somebody else is selling them. Oh, really? Yes. So what you could do is you could take your, um, these are DPNs, double point needles. No, they are not. Oh, they're not? But I love the effort that you just <laughs> put into it. Those are just chow goo interchangeable needles. That's what I said. So you could take that and let's say you're working on a project you can just t put them in one and two, and now you've got a stitch stopper. That, I love that. That is flipping fantastic. So that um, obviously, if you pull it, yes, it can it can come loose. They're not they're not strong enough that they could damage your needles. Uh, but again, I think it's perfect. It's it's up to you to decide whether or not you're comfortable with putting something like this on your needles. So that's totally your decision. Uh, I take no, where's my legal counsel? I take no responsibility. <laughs> but there are companies that are selling these stitch stoppers. 
and you could use it for that. So either if you put it on your, uh, keep it on your chip sack as a drawstring stopper, or you, you use it as a uh, stitch stopper, choice is yours, but it comes with it. So as I said, you have six inch. Let me show you some more six inches. <laughs> six inches. I can't help you there. So I came across uh, graffiti fabric and this is actually a polyester and it's, it's got a soft nap to it. Love it. So we've got some graffiti. Love, love, love. And it's kind of like, I don't know. I just think it's edgy and I love it. Here's another version. I think there's five different graffiti um, fabrics in the small. I don't remember. I still have some uh, graffiti in the mediums, but I still have yet to sew those. Um, but there's there's other ones that you're going to see. And I apologize. In the shop. Did you mention that these were your postcard models? Or oh, I'm sorry. Postcard? Yep, this one's called postcards. So this is postcard 10 inch, postcard 6 inch. Yep. And then graffiti. Graffiti. So I'm just taking over for you. And then we have another graffiti. And then, ooh, I like the little face on him. Yeah. I think there's literally, I Couple only have, have faces. two, I only have two of these. So graffiti is completely limited edition. So if you're into that, you got to uh, grab it up while you can. And then you've got another graffiti. I wish, I wish, I wish I had yardage of graffiti. Uh, because I really think it is so. Oh, this cool. one has the other side of the face right there. And this is this, an, cool. this is another graffiti. So they're a lot of fun. I tried my best. Uh, I did get pictures loaded onto the website that uh, I try to get the side so you can get a really good idea. At the very most, on some of these, I only have like two. And and these before we have never even talked about it. These are probably coming out next weekend, or do we know? Sign up for the newsletter, yes. definitely, to figure out when these come out. So go to FiberHustle.com, sign up for our newsletter. Once you get the email, you do have to confirm that it is you because uh, these can come out Wednesday, to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. So the newsletter will tell you everything. This one is called Bright Patchwork. Love, 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 love this one. And then this one I'm calling... Uh, this one is, I believe, Ocean Fade. And this is the one Carrie, when I was originally prototyping, uh, she was like, you should carry that in the shop. I'm like, Carrie, I only have a little bit of the fabric. So the ones that you're seeing, the limited edition, it is fabric that has come and gone in the universe. And so I only had a little bit that I was able to get. And so uh, Ocean Fade, definitely. This, I don't know if it's showing a really beautiful blue, but it is. So yeah, that one is more of a blue teal that goes down to a And fade. then the last one in the small size that I have is the rainbow watercolor. And I love that too. So definitely- This reminds me of Susan Van Conkel. She loves her pinks. People have uh, given a lot of feedback. Chip, we don't necessarily love plaid. So I was trying to, trying to steer clear of the plaid. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite ones available in all three sizes is going to be the, um, this one's Wasabi Zen. And what I love about this one is if you're ever, um, if you're ever at a loss for color combinations, like this is pretty inspiring. So if like Very. you just look at your sack for inspiration, <laughs> I don't mean it, <laughs> but I you, if you're coming here for the first time, this is our show. <laughs> this is what you're going to get. So these do, uh, and I should say they also have a, all of them have the black canvas bottom and then black canvas tabs, black canvas handle. So like this one on the 10 inch, you can get a full grip on it. And then the fabrics themselves are going to be uh, a little different. The white, the Wasabi Zen, it's the, I think one or two that will have the, uh, It'll have the, the white canvas. The other ones have the, the cream tan. And you guys saw how big this shawl was. It's pretty huge and massive. I mean, it, it, it disappeared. It's like a, it's, this is definitely huge shawl, uh, maybe even a blanket. It can definitely hold a sweater. And I think we had like eight skeins, eight skeins in here. Yeah, there's maybe more than that. I mean, yeah. like this is definitely, 
if you're if you need something to move in, and then at the ten inch, this fits in your uh, IKEA bookshelf very nicely. <gasps> Did you try it? Like. Oh, yes. I can't see. Uh, here's our one of our IKEA bookshelves back here. I'm sure it will fit. <laughs> it can just go in your little IKEA bookshelf. Oh, and it's almost fashion. <laughs> fashion. So that's that. And then I think, gang, I think that's all of them that I have to show, like at the ready. Oh, is there one more? We have bright pat patchwork. I'm just, I'm totally, totally in love with these. That's so awesome. All of them have one pocket. And then all of them have the, the canvas. There's foam so that when you get them, I promise you, we have taken great care to fold these up and put them in nice packaging. They're gonna look like crap when you get them. You're gonna need, I'm gonna have instructions that as soon as you buy, you're gonna steam them and then they're gonna bounce right back up into shape. Just like the chip basket. Just like the chip basket. The chip There's basket, a little bit of care. You get it, you're like, ooh, but it looks like crap. Well, yeah, because I need you to iron it. Yeah, I mean, we've chosen for you guys to do a little work when you get it instead of charging you a lot more for shipping. We would love to ship them out in boxes and stuff so they come perfect and ready for you, but that's really just gonna jack up your price and fiber hustle. We think about you, the customer. <laughs> well, I kid you not. I mean, yeah. like, we were, yesterday, we were uh, packing up bags and um, we were putting the sacks in the bags and we're doing this. Every one of these gets like, it looks like this. It gets ironed and freshened up. We're lint rolling. We're just making sure that it looks the best it can only to have to fold it. And I was like, dang it. You know, I wish that we could send these out in boxes like a Stetson hat or like, you know, a, a, something that is so fragile, yeah. but it, it just doesn't make sense. You would you know, it would be cost prohibitive on shipping. So it is gonna come flat, it is gonna come folded. You are gonna wanna steam it when you get it. And I promise you, it'll look showroom new when you do. Yeah, or if we ever do a show, just come see us and you don't have to fold it. Well, Problem have, solved. Did you want us to show you how to fluff it? <laughs> <laughs> no. fluff, fluff your sack? There will be instructions <laughs> on that sent later. That's what I've got to work on this week. I've got to uh, get the care instructions get going. That's so, awesome. No, yes, you did gang. very hard. You worked very hard on those. Gang, I made so many, and it's like, uh, big news, we're moving. <laughs> we are moving. <laughs> But we are staying in the same area. Same where, neighborhood, believe it or not. Yeah, we're going to just a, a, a little bit bigger house, which is good because this place is all tore up with fiber hustle stuff, and our trying we're trying to come, we're trying to make our lives upstairs is our lives. Oh. Downstairs is business and stuff like that, and there's a house a few doors down that we think we could do that in. And we're going to live there for, we're trying to make a plan, live there for a few years before we kind of find our forever home. So hopefully this move will be the best thing for us and just, yeah. But you guys have been keeping us busy and it's like, I have nowhere to put things once, 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 once they're made. Yes. Also, like the next couple of weeks when these go live and the yarn, uh, buy up so it's less for us to have Please to move. Please get them out of the house, get them <laughs> Gone. We we need them gone because we don't want to move them. <laughs> yes, because we're too lazy. Oh my god! <laughs> but, All right. Wait. Last thing to say about the move is hopefully no guarantees. Setting up this area takes a lot of time to do this kind of quality show for you. We're hoping that we can actually have a YouTube studio that we can walk in, go flick flick. Hey, you ready? Action. So that's not a guarantee that there will be shows all the time, but there are times that we, we move 18 different things to get this configured into this living room, and we're hoping that we will solve that problem. So we can just go, you want to do an episode? Yes. It sounds, you sound cocky. I know, but I want this you to, want to do another? I want to be very calm. We can do two in one day now. <laughs> nobody needs that much. No, no, nobody needs that much of us. But, all okay. right. No, perfect. So, yeah, so uh, please sign up for the fiberhustle.com uh, newsletter. You need to confirm your subscription in your email. You say sign up, go to your email, confirm, because we can't send you anything unless you confirm your subscription. It's, true. it's, it's spam, true. folks. We, you know, we can't spam you. Mm -hmm. We don't want to spam you. We don't want to spam. Otherwise, yeah. it could be your Aunt Sally's Magus, you know, Magnum PI who's signing you up. <laughs> I think I know where you were going, but <laughs> you guys, so. 
All right. So, awesome. Uh, that's what I've been, like, literally, that's what I made that. Yeah, I know. They're perfect. I made them. They're amazing. Thems. I made I made all of them. <laughs> Aaron. Yes. You made that? I do. I have uh, a couple more things to show. This one I'm kind of excited about because uh, I always talk about wanting to do color work, and I've kind of done color work on a hat that I made last year. It was a minor. I give it a C. Uh, but I have made this cow, which I am very excited about. This is a study in blue by Samantha West. It is like a $5 pattern. It's worsted weight and you will need 306 to 328 yards. And that's 197 uh, of the main color and 109 uh, for the contrast color. And let's just take a look because there's something I would like to tell you about this one. Um, one thing, I might, just because this is the first time ever blocking color work, it looks so much better since I blocked it. I was like, this is going to be a hot mess. Once you block your color work, the stitches come out much better. I am very happy with what I have done here. I know I still need a little bit of work. But one thing I did is when I blocked it, I obviously pinned it all down here. But now, which I think I'm going to take a steamer, I still, I have some creases here from the way that I blocked it. Again, hopefully a steamer or something will take that out. This is where it's basically uh, top down, top up, no, bottom up. And one thing I want to talk to you about right now is, I'm not an expert, but color dominance. I started down here, and as you notice, I think I was flicking, I tried, this is the first time that I tried doing uh, continental with, uh, continental and flicking so I did two different hands doing this my flicking hand is kind of terrible but I made it through a whole project on this bottom row I was using the blue yarn in my left hand and the white yarn in my right hand and then right here is when I switched this top row is exactly like this bottom row except for I used the contrast color here in my right hand and then I used it in my left hand here. So wow, color, because this is more prominent. Yeah, color dominance is a real thing, which probably 90% of our viewers know, but me as a first time doing something like this, uh, I had to learn myself, which I think I did learn. And it was kind of fun to do a little uh, right hand work and then left hand work flick, then do some continental. Uh, it took a little time to do the flicking, but it's all right. But yeah, I think this is great. This is uh, my 100% non-superwash Targi yarn. The blue is called Mr. Blue Sky, and the white-ish color is called Dirty Bone. Question. Yes. Okay, lay it down. Okay. All right, so this is me obviously not being a knitter. So when you block this, you were talking about the, the permanent line. I agree with you. Once you once you steam that out, that yes. that, that hopefully it's it, yes. a non-issue. But could you have blocked this so that you didn't actually make the? Did you put the pin here? Where did you put your pins? Well, I use the uh, I have some Knit Picks pins, which are not really singular. It's sing, like a comb. Single pins, yeah, like a comb, like four pins, four pins, four. So I did it like this, stretched it out a little bit. All right. So my question is because this is a, I, I understand it's a cowl. But could you have started your your um, your combs or your pins here so that this ribbing actually cinches in a little bit on the top and on the bottom? Oh, okay. You maybe could have. Chip, I don't know that for a fact. I can look that up and we can have a discussion next time about it. Ask your knitting friends if, about that. If we wanted to have it come in a little bit, what I should have done... Just FYI, this was done on four millimeter needles. I used my wood clover needles for this. What I could have done is probably done 3.75 or 3.5 needles for the ribbing part here, because mm -hmm. that would have made this tighter and kind of come in more. Right. And that, and then once I got to the color work part, gone to the regular four millimeter needles, which would have made it, I don't want to say tapered, that's not a good word, is it? So, it would have made this the ribbing a little bit tighter. This is a three by one ribbing, so it, it would have maybe 
just come in a little bit more. If that it would makes cinch sense. it. Yeah, cinch it. So it would have probably, next time I can try something like that to see what happens. And I think my bind off I would do different next time. Uh, I just literally uh, knit, uh, brought over, knit, brought over, knit, brought over. I probably would have done a super stretchy bind off. And I'll show you the inside just so you can see my floats. Again, I'm still proud for my first time. But yeah, here are my floats. And obviously, see, is this where the, give me a second. Yeah, where it showed better here, once I had the uh, dirty bone on the left side, this is dirty bone on the right side when I'm flicking it. So it looks better here. You can see how the floats are different in the back for the white compared to this. Interesting. Yeah. So again, someday I'll be hopefully a color expert and do some sweaters and stuff like that. But again, I'm super happy. Oh man, I can imagine a whole sweater in this. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of work. But yeah, this is again, a study in blue by Samantha West. Worsted weight about 306 to 328 yards. And I haven't even put it on yet. So let me see what it looks like. I mean, oh, that I, looks really if, sharp. If you have, it goes exactly with the beard. If you had a jacket and all bundled up, I think it would look really good. But I can totally see using a smaller needle for the ribbing, just to kind of, like you said, cinch it up a little bit so the wear is a little bit better, especially if you want it a little bit tighter around your neck. Because this is pretty large right now for my big head, and I can't imagine someone smaller doing something like that. So, no, I'm really proud of you. I mean, like, color work was something that Aaron was very, I wouldn't say anti, but it, we, he, he definitely shied away from that. And just thinking, like, how many times have you, like, in not so many words, said it's above my pay grade? Yeah. And the first few times I tried it, I did continental style, where I hold, held, I don't have any yarn examples around me, both the yarns in my uh, left hand. And it just was difficult for me because they would slide into each other and I'm trying to get around to it. And that's why I try like this. It worked out much better, probably a slower process to begin with, but it just takes, everything takes practice, right? So once I, I get going. I, okay. Question, question. Press yes. conference. Yes. Me? Mm, yes, you check. Okay. So uh, now that you're, uh, you're, you're, you're finding your footing on color work, uh, we actually have a, um, oh, there's two fine gentlemen that love to do Christmas balls every year, uh, and they make new patterns every year. Oh, okay. And they can spell the word color correctly? <laughs> no. They you don't design them. <laughs> they buy no, them and make them. I know. I was just, that was just. Okay. Arn and Carlos. That was a little Easter egg. So you would like a Christmas ball. When Christmas season comes yes, around from Arne and Carlos. We have, uh, we have the technology. We do have the technology. The thing with that is I think most of the, well, I don't know if there's a worst, I have the patterns, worst the DK or fingering. It doesn't matter. Obviously, fingering is going to be a little bit uh, Oh, my God. Smaller, I mean, but... like, that would be the best Christmas gift if I had Christmas balls. I can't even get a sweater, gang. If I can't get a sweater, I want the balls. No. I want the. I, I want you to give me. <laughs> give me the balls. Give me the balls. <laughs> we talked about this in October. I said I am ready to make you a sweater. Then we just got busy and maybe. I don't even the remember new, you the leaving new house for the October. Christ let alone. Yes, my uncle died. That I remember. <laughs> it all comes back. All, it all comes. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> Thanks. Love you, Uncle Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody handles grief differently. <laughs> but yeah, 100% uh, Targi, non-superwash. I love this base. That's why I carry it. Um, there's not much left in the store right now. I know it's not really worsted season, but a bunch of new colors are going to be coming in my 100% Targi. So check it out. <laughs> Did I just throw you off? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That was it's terrible. <laughs> well, about four times, you'd be like, don't remember you going. Don't I'm like, yes, my uncle passed. <laughs> it's just not funny. 
he had the humor like I did, so that's why we're all <laughs> joking. All right, did you make anything else? I did. You made that? Uh, I did. Everybody, this is the Suma Stripes Shaw by, excuse the name, M-E-I-J-U. Is that Mayu? Is it Mayu? Mayu, K-A-L-L-I-O. Calio? We'll go with that, Calio. Okay. So yes, show notes below, always check it out. So this is a small Shaw, two colors, DK. And again, I was looking for projects, projects to do. So uh, as sample knits, I love this thing. This, if you wanna hold that side real quick, this takes two wow. colors and it is, the gray is, have you looked outside? <laughs> like if, when people say, do you want to go on a walk? You're like, have you looked outside? It's all grand gross. And this, uh, what do you even call it? It's, well, I'll tell you what it's called. It's called, it's a sting song. Cause he had that song fields of gold. Not even the biggest sting fan, but it reminded me kind of a gold color, kind of a wheat. And that's why I called, it's called, it's a sting song. So what yes, else can you tell us about it? I can tell you a lot about it. I can tell you it looks fabulous. Excuse me if I uh, accidentally hit the microphone. It looks fabulous on. It is 219 yards and it is in 4.5 millimeter needles. And what it's supposed to do is... You should wear it outside. Uh, do, are you ready for me to leave? Your shirt. Oh, <laughs> The shirt says outdoors. You know the outdoors now. Remember those? Um, the stripes that I did are a little bit different than the pattern because, gang, I got so caught up on the show on Hulu called the, what is it? It's called The Curious Case of Natalia something that I actually screwed up the shawl even though it looks almost perfect. I think it's supposed to be like eight rows of stripes and I did nine rows. But I got so caught up in this show that I didn't even realize that I kind of screwed it up. Until what show I got is to this? The Curious Case of Natalia. Don't know her last name. I don't know if you'd like it. It's this person who gets adopted and they can't tell if she's seven oh. years old or 37 years garbage. old. Garbage. It's garbage TV, and but you get hooked. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe all this is happening. And like you want to tell your neighbors. and me watch garbage, you watch some of the strangest shows ever. Anime. Kardashians. Kardashians. What else do I watch? Garbage. Uh, if you know, you know where the bears are. <laughs> yeah, we started where the bears are again. Because it's, it's, it's a funny little show. But yeah, I got so wrapped up in this documentary. It's two seasons and maybe a third season coming. Mm, delicious. Uh, that I kind of screwed up. But you know what? It doesn't matter, because this is my shot. I made it. A pattern is just a recipe that you kind of follow, and you don't have to follow it to a T. Which, ex which that describes all of my quilting. Invariably, I mess up on every freaking pattern that I end up with something unique in my own. Yeah, exactly. And I, if anybody looked in this house and said, which one of you is the perfectionist? They don't even look at my direction. They just point at this one. They just watch him fall downstairs. I have not fallen down the <laughs> stairs in years. We just talked about that a couple days ago. I think I'm an, officially an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> I have not broke. There's new stairs coming. Well, we were talking about the stairs when we go to the new house and everything. And I said, we're, going, two to, sets. we're going down memory lane. I said, remember when I actually broke this stair <laughs> and I had to have the neighbor <laughs> come over and help me rebuild it? Then we said, oh, remember at our friend Brad's house when I actually broke his stair when New Year's Eve, I fell down <laughs> at least 15 stairs and I broke the last three. And that's one of my skinny days. But anyways, yeah. So this shawl was tons of fun. This is my BFL DK based uh, superwash. It's, these are colors are available in the store. Check it out. So if you're looking for something it's not really light because it's DK, but something short that's not going to like be a huge blanket shawl. I would this highly recommend this. I love how this melted, and it's a very medium contrast fade. It's not a high contrast because I was like, how are we going to go from stripes to this side? And like magic just happened. You didn't have to pick up really any stitches or do anything. It's just, I love it. I love it. What were you going to say, Chip? 
No, I was going to add on to with the size of it is this is something that you could easily wear to work and mm -hmm. then while you're at work throw it in your throw it in your drawer or you throw it in your bag and it's not going to, you know, take up the entire space. Exactly. Cuz I mean like literally this is something you can just put in your bag and then be done with it until you're ready for it again. Mm -hmm. It's a nice size. And really, you know, you if you're at work or if it's just a cold day around the house, it is nice something to just put on you that you don't... Yeah, it's much different than this one, which is... That is... You, should I get, again, your once desk, I block it, it's just going to get bigger. That one, it's your desk is sitting underneath an air vent. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. All right. So what? Uh, what's next? That is all I have for You Made It. I don't have any uh, what are you makings. I literally, I don't think, I have things on the needles, but nothing I've worked on in months not worth showing. Well, you know what time of year it is. Spring? It's getting into be tax season. <laughs> Way to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> so that means uh, between making baskets and, I'm sorry, making sacks, I have to finish the home stretch on all of the mediums, and then I start then I need to do taxes, and then we need to move. And so I'm going to think of winter 2024 going into 2025. Okay. So, so I'm actually working, like next pattern oh is going to be snow day. And this is by Pen and Paper Patterns. And I really, oh, I saw this one and I thought it was so freaking Adorbs. It is. It, it really, really is. is cute. And then this one is a traditionally pe traditionally pieced. It's no uh, paper piecing. You know me. I, I don't like paper piecing. So I'm going to do um, the snow day. And I wonder if I have... Uh, I don't. Let me go to my magic button. I love magic. And there we go. All right. So I have my fabric collection picked out, but not the fabrics themselves. Uh, I love Alice in Glass, and when I first started, um, I, would, I almost said collecting, which is what I did. I was collecting quilting fabric, and I got a yard bundle of the Mariner's, uh, is it Mariner's cloth? It is the, Mar yeah, it's the Mariner's cloth yardage, and I have all of the ones on your left, and then I also have the Kaleidoscope 2021, um, which is the, it's also a woven, and these are all solids. So between those, I want to work into this snow day pattern and work on that. And I really loved what I uh, thought would really work well is that the Mariner's Cloth, uh, and I think that one came out in 2018 uh, or 2019. I think it's 2018 which they're no longer uh, producing that, but you can still get them maybe on Etsy. There's some sellers that, are, that still have some of this fabric, but it looks kind of nitty. And I thought, how cool would that be is if I, I just really ran with the, um, uh, do the down. So kind of ran with the, where they have these brims and how they're already, um, what's the word I want to call? I do not Striped. know. Okay. So that with the the Mariner's cloth, I thought, yeah, I could totally see making the stripes out of that. And it really adds another uh, uh, another color because you've got the cream and then whatever the, yeah. uh, the background color is. And then for the other parts of the, um, for the other parts of the, the hat, the solid parts would be in there. Now, I do have, I have the entire collection of both. And so I'm like, okay, how do I dumb this down that maybe I don't use every color in, in the crayon box because I don't want it to look so chaotic. I want it to be very clean. I want it to be very modern, especially after going to the modern quilt, um, quilt con. Yeah, I want it to be, I want it to be clean. And like her colors, I think uh, for pen and paper, they used uh, six, six colors in all. So I'm not giving any uh, trade secrets away, but they used six colors for for the um, for the beanies and the scarves mm -hmm. across the entire quilt. 
and I figure if I'm if I'm doing this, like, do I stick with six colors? Do I dumb it down even further? I'm I'm not quite sure. Sometimes it would be nice for somebody to just uh, you know say, okay, let's look at your uh, let's look at your stash, and then this is what you're gonna do. Okay, I can sew it. Nice. Now, how big is it gonna be? I don't think you mentioned that part. Is it all right? So king, you have, queen, da da. You have two. Um, actually, both both patterns are. So there's two options. You can do all of, uh, all just hats, and then I can show you the back. You can just do all hats, or you can do the hats and scarves. I prefer the hats and scarves. Yeah. And then either way you go, it's going to be 66 by 78. Help, help me bed-wise. It's uh, a, a, around a queen. Okay. Because a... Uh, a king bed is 76 by 80. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think a queen is 60 or... I think a queen is like 60 by 80. Okay. So... So it's going to be a good size. It's going to be a good okay. size. I basically, I was getting at, is it a little square or is it a big square or is it like a king size? No, it's it's, okay. it's just sh just shy of a, of a king. Nice. And I think it's so cute. When I saw this, and I don't really do cutesy cutesy, but this is a really cute winter. And so at the pace, I, I know that I've got to set my sights on like, let's do things way in advance. So this is ready by Christmas. So I will be busy, but I will be working on this. So we should have a Christmas in July. Christmas that, in July. That love way it. we can start making our Christmas makes so they're already done, finished. I would love that. Like, I would love to do my Halloween in spring, do spring in Halloween. Yeah. And it's just like, you're always, like, you're, most days, are you with me? Most days, you feel like, you know, I've got to chase the bull. And, mo and, and more often, the bull is chasing you. It's true. It's true. 100%. So I, you know, like, I, I, you get to set the tone, you get to set the pace. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be, I'm already working on 2025. Look at me ahead of myself. Woohoo! Good for you. I'm excited for you. All right, Aaron. And you're, uh, what are you making or what are you looking I, forward to? I, I, nothing. You're not looking I'm forward looking to anything? <laughs> I have, I have nothing. Not even works. dinner? Not even dinner. Yeah, I just, I have some shop update stuff I can show or could wait for that. Um... What I think you should. I think you should show. I should show them some shop updates. So it's not an update. It's a it's a restock. So we do have some restock. I'm still out there dying. I'm trying to come up with new colors for new albums. If you follow our Instagram, Fiber Hustle Instagram, uh, you've seen kind of some teasers of some albums I'm looking at and looking forward to doing. But right now we have restock. The Doors colorway absolutely live is back in the restock this color is a bunch of blues mixed in with some browns because um i don't have a picture of the album cover but jim morrison's wearing brown leather pants and everything behind him is blue so that is a gorgeous color then i have the album the good life wait now gang this one okay i am not the knitter in the house i know the good life like you know, you've got all these names and these colorways for all these schemes of yarns, but mm -hmm. that one, I know. This one, I can't tell you how many orders I've packed of this one. This is one of my favorites. I and love this you one. you do follow Carrie over at the Creative Obsession, I forget what her handle is on Instagram. She just made a tube sock out of this, which looks glorious. And wait, we just shared it on our Instagram a couple days ago. So you can see this knit up in a tube sock. This is the good life. It is yellows, blues, and the yellow and blue kind of running together, but that is because it's on purpose because that album cover has a hint of green on it. And wait, oh wait, my, say all that again? It has some yellow and some blue, and I had the green and blue run into each other, the yellow and blue run into each other because the album cover has a hint of green in it. Oh, okay. Because, you know, yellow and blue make green. Yeah. So yeah, so that's why it's on there. I love this colorway. It's one of the ones I'm most proud of. And actually, I don't think the brown and yellow go together, but there's still, with Absolutely Live and The Good Life, there's a lot of color similarities in here. So I'm thinking they could go together, but I don't know if the yellow would be too much of a woohoo to go with that. And 
Also restock, we have Moose Tracks, which is another one of my favorites. Oh my God, that one, I packed a lot of orders yes. for that one. It reminds us of the ice cream called Moose Tracks. I'm assuming everybody has Moose Tracks. But then I do some uh, speckle, a color here that does a little color break that breaks it as a little blue and purple color, which I am actually gagged over this. And our friend, Angel of the Scrappy Angel is actually going to uh, make a sweater out of this. Well, she's using this as a main color and she has a couple accent colors, so I can't wait to see that. And last but not yes, you uh, it's just a moment ago you said you assume everybody has moose tracks in their fridge, in their freezer, <laughs> just here. No, everybody probably has moose tracks in their like Safeway, Kroger. Big, wait, Big Bear's not around anymore. Publix, Do you Albertsons. remember Big Bear? It was, uh, I don't know if it was exclusive to Ohio or not. It doesn't matter. But yeah, Moose Tracks is so an ice cream. That is you... like vanilla and chocolate sprinkles and maybe a little of caramel, 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 whichever way you say it. Are you going through your food era, your this food is, inspiration food. era? No, this is, I think this your is the only one tooth? named after food. I can try to do a whole food thing, but then I'd rather do album covers than more food. <laughs> Bob's Burgers. Yeah, Bob's Burgers. Here's crab fried rice. There's only a few. There's only a few options for that. And the very last things I kind of show, I have dyed up some uh, colors that are main staples in my fingering on my BFL, but also some new ones. Can I introduce one of them first? Yes. Okay, gang. I need uh, get get your your crazy card out because I need somebody to settle a household argument. This, my friends, is not going to show well on it's this podcast. It's so bright. It is so it's... bright. It is, um, I, that's what I want you to settle the argument. Because I say this one in real life, and you have to buy it to figure this out with us. I, it's apricot. It's an apricot color. Aaron, on the other hand side. I think it looks like a carrot from like a video game. So... If you think of a carrot on any kind of video game, it's that orange and that bright and that neon. But again, it's hard to tell this color on this camera. There are a few colors, y'all, that I have dyed lately. Now, call, there's one called, now that's a pop, and it's a super, super bright pink magenta that I can't even photograph because the camera's like, <laughs> what is that? I'm like, please take a picture. So I'm trying to figure out how I can actually photograph it. I've even tried video and it's so, it's literally called Now That's a Pop because it is a pop of color that would be perfect. This is another pop of color that would go with something. Stephen West. Stephen West, but yeah, this one is called I'm Good on the Eyes because- Are me, you? Not on the camera. <laughs> not on the camera. I was thinking, you know, a little to a carrot Carrots are good for the eyes. That's why I called this one good for the eyes. But now you're like, no, it's apricot. It's it's an apricot. I but again, you I can't even a, pronounce the word apricot. <laughs> Apricots. I love to eat them. Apricot. 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 <laughs> it depends where you're from. I will not be corrected in my own home. But yeah, so this. One's Somebody called. please collect this and let us know what color it is. Yeah, buy it. Do some color work with it. Show it. If you can get a good picture of it. Exa it. Exa exactly. <laughs> then uh, Golden Kelp, we now have on our BFL DK base. Golden Kelp is one of the most delicious colors. It's coming a little greener than normal right now. And then a new color I have because I was looking for more semi-solids. This one's called The Color of Thunder. And I think everybody has like some kind of storm kind of color it's, or something like it's that. It's kind of a steel. Yes. And when, this is a gray. And whenever I think of the color, the color of thunder, I think back to Ohio. Here in Seattle, we don't really get that many thunderstorms. This kind of no lightning, kind of no thunder rains. And back home, I remember like late in the afternoon when the clouds turn that like really blue, really gray, really dark. You're like something's gonna come and hit us. That's why I said the color of thunder, because you can hear the thunder when the clouds turn that color. It's very pretty. Thank you. And I, I, these three don't go together, but I'm sure. Well, no, apricot goes. and uh, thunder go together. Thunder. <laughs> apricot and thunder. Yes. <laughs> Carrot and thunder go uh, amazingly together. Yes. Or thunder 
and golden kelp. I think those look gorgeous together. Yeah. Yeah, I think those are perfect. The very last thing that I need, wait, do you have anything else before I show my last thing? No, my love, it is all about you. Oh my gosh, so hey, I'm gonna show you one thing that our BFF Carrie made, Carrie of the Crave Session, I know we talk about her all the time. She sent me this little sack that said, I'm being creative AF, and if you have ordered from us before, you know that we have bags that mention the AF. And I think this is the cutest thing. It's a button, two button snaps. You keep a skein in there, and then you open it up. You can put a skein in there to uh, kind of knit out of. But she sent me a sock tube of one of my yarns. This is called uh, Somewhere Back in Time. And this is what it looks like knit up into a tube which is gonna be perfect for socks. And this is an Iron Maiden inspired colorway. It has yellows, reds, a little bit of tan, a little bit of white. And this is actually probably coming off as blackish, but this is a really like blue steel kind of blue in there. Does the website have better colors? The website, yes, does reflect better colors. So go check it on there. And also our monitor is not the best color when we see it right now. So when we watch this back, if we do, we might be like, oh, that's more true to color. Now, Carrie also sent something else. What'd she send? In that bag. To your right. Look up to your right. Oh, God. I mean, yay, Carrie sent something else. And this was a gift for Chip. She sent this to me, and she thought, oh, you like flowers. You like fugly fabric. <laughs> so she sent me this. And I immediately, immediately, gang, I got, I got the cold white, the sweats and everything because she didn't know she, she hit a landmine because back in my, my early 20s, maybe 22, 21, I decided for a long while I was going to get a tattoo. And I woke up from a nap one day and I said to my friend, friend, we're going to go get, let's go get tattoos. So we went, I had no idea what I was going to get. I got a freaking sunflower tattoo on my shoulder. Does this look like the face of somebody who has a sunflower on his shoulder? Hashtag, if I see this in the comments, I know you watch this episode because... Yes, I had a, a sunflower tattoo that I had removed, and it is all clean now. Uh, but Carrie, thank you for the fugly fabric. And as a quilter, I will say what we've all been guided towards is that it's only, uh, fabric is only going to be ugly um, until you cut it up. And if, ugly, if it's still the ugly, then you haven't cut it enough. I think you should work this into the quilt that you're going to make for uh, the holidays. Why? <laughs> it could be one of the hats. No, I'm going to make Carrie something very, very limited edition Ooh, exclusive. Ooh, holders. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, Carrie, thank you so, so much. You for too. Of me. You too. And you both have different fabric taste and no if she was so in love with it why did she give it to me because she's that generous <laughs> she is a giver and we love her for that so uh anything else uh nothing else for me just i need to start some new projects i'm still knitting up some uh sample stuff many of you have been kind enough to offer hey i'll knit you a sample I'm gonna see what I can do myself right now because we don't have the funds right now to pay people for their time. And I know a bunch of you have been so generous that says, I'll do it for free. But I know that conversation has been going around lately about people not getting paid for their time. So I'm out of that. Well, yeah, someday when there's a budget for that, yeah, you, you, well, of course, 100% of course. do that. And I thank those people who did reach out. But Christine, we know that you're coming uh, out this way this summer. So we're gonna, we're gonna, whatever you wanna bring. <laughs> whatever whatever you want to bring us in August, we will take. All right. Awesome. So, uh, Aaron, is there anything else that you'd like to get off your chest? No, I'm just sad that this is the last episode with this view. I don't know what our next view is going to be. I mean, I've been in the, we've been in this house for so long. We could try to get one more squeezed in. We just won't have any furniture. 
We may not have anything to show. <laughs> yeah, we might have anything to show. I don't know what uh, we're going to be able to. We could do. Uh, we could do an epic uh, Lord of the Rings episode with Seamus. Oh, everybody would watch that. He's over there taking a little kitty nap. He's so cute. You know how you have you can watch YouTube and you could just 30, 30 minutes, 60 minutes of birds outside their window. It's amazing the YouTube hole you can go down and like, why am I watching this? And 10 minutes later, you're like, oh, I just watched somebody make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But yes. It's <laughs> funny. All right. So uh, stand by. We are with you. And then uh, be sure to, let's, let's do it. Let's like and subscribe. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, oh, and by the way. What? Time change. Yeah, it did, and it's coming in like a wrecking ball. We uh, uh, woke up an hour late, so which means what we woke up at a normal time, but it was still like I felt like, oh my god, I'm already late. Yeah. So uh, did you feel that way this I morning? I did this morning. I was like, eh, I'm not in the mood for it, but we changed the clocks before we went to bed instead of waking up with them different. So. So you weren't confused. I was. I wasn't confused. Well, the kitchen's confused because I haven't done dishes yet. No, the time is wrong. No, I changed it already today. Oh, did you? I'm with it today, kinda. Like, kind of, a little bit. Everything else changes by itself, so. You know what? Don't you change by yourself. <laughs> Don't go changing. <laughs> no, we love you. We loved seeing you today. And uh, we'll... We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. All right, Yoen. Play us out. Play us out.